Hello, Levitt from the space station. How do you hear? How do you hear? Hear you just fine, Shane. Do you hear us okay? Hey, Billy, great to talk to you and great to talk to the Lovett family today. Shane, we have um, several hundred folks here in our Hendrick Chenault Theater representing our student body, our faculty, our parent body, our alumni body. Some of your old schoolmates are here representing our board of trustees. We're so grateful to you for giving us this time and so grateful to you for your service to our country and to the world at large. I'm going to start right away by introducing our first student with a question for you, if that's okay. He is uh, Nick Becker. He's a senior, and like, uh, like you, when you were a student here, he's interested in flight and aeronautics uh, and may well uh, be on the same kind of journey you are uh, today. So Nick Becker has the first question for you, Shane, but thank you for doing this for us, and thank you for all you mean to us. Thanks, Billy. Hi, Mr. Kimbrough. I was wondering, what is your favorite experiment that you've done or plan to do on the ISS, and how does that compare to your shuttle mission? Well, we have a lot more time up here on this mission compared to the shuttle mission, so we'll do hundreds of experiments in my five to six months up here. Um, so far, I think my favorite one has been, we got to, I got to grow some plants up here, so I grew some lettuce. Uh, so I kind of felt like Mac, Matt Damon a bit in the Martian, but uh, we grew some plants, we got to harvest them, and we got to eat the lettuce while we were up here. So that was a welcome treat to our normal diet. Hello, my name is Davis Hayden. What, what was it like to orbit Earth for two days before your Soyu docked to the space station? Yeah, to me, those were a long couple of days. We're in a very, very tiny spacecraft built by the Russians called the Soyuz, like you mentioned. And there's not a lot to do in there. And your uh, three people are in that tiny uh, area for a couple of days. So we just kind of got acclimated to the space environment and microgravity a little bit. Um, but in general, it was just a long two days before we got here to the space station. Thank you. My name is Adam Young. Where is your favorite place to hang out on the space station and why? Well, this, this entire complex is so unique and so cool, but my favorite place and I think most astronauts' favorite place is hanging out in a module called the Cupola, um, and, and it's just a module full of windows. So if you get a chance to look it up online, you'll see why it's our favorite. Uh, so it's like a 360-degree window uh, module. It's a pretty small module, but it looks down at Earth all the time, so we just get spectacular v views of our planet. Hello, my name is Montana Dickerson. How do you brush your teeth on in space? All right, get into the good basic questions now, but these are good. Um, so we brush, the, brush our teeth the same way, but we have a little problem that, that we don't have on Earth. So up here, we don't have any sinks. So you got a couple options. You can either, whatever's in your mouth, you can spit it out into a napkin, but that gets pretty messy up here. So most folks, including myself, choose to just swallow it. So I'll be looking forward to a sink here when I get back to Earth. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Isabella Moffitt. Is there a trash can on the space station and can you recycle? So we have a lot of ways to collect our trash. There's Thomas Pesquet, a French astronaut floating by, one of my crewmates. Um, there's a lot of ways and we have to manage our trash very carefully because otherwise it's just a mess up here and things are all over the place. Um, so what we do in general is separate our dry and our wet trash. So our dry trash meaning paper or maybe clothes, things like that. Wet trash meaning anything that could smell in a week or a month or three months from now. So food containers and things like that. So we try to separate those um, and keep those clean. And then we put our trash in these cargo vehicles that come up every so often. So we have a Japanese cargo vehicle attached right now. It's going to leave here at the end of January. So before it leaves, we're going to put all or all or whatever we can of our trash on board that vehicle to take it away. Thank you. My name is Caroline Colavito. How do you wash your hair in space?
Another tricky thing to do, but uh, what's kind of cool is when you just put water on your hair and you do it out of a drink bag, and we'll talk about that here in a minute too, but it comes in a bag like this and it's just water. Um, so you just squirt it out onto your head, and the cool thing is it, it doesn't go anywhere. It, the surface tension allows it to stay on your head. Um, so you can wash it that way. We also have shampoo that we use. It's a little different than the shampoo you use on Earth, so it's not so foamy and things don't go everywhere. Um, so we use that in a com I use that in combination with some water to wash my hair every day. Thank you. Hi, my name is Libby Stewart, and I was wondering if you experience weather in space. So on the space station here, we don't experience weather. It's always pretty much the same temperature. It's very comfortable, about 72 degrees, kind of like your school is or an office building would be. Um, and we can regulate it if we want up and down a little bit, but in general, it's very consistent. Uh, we do, from this vantage point, though, get to see weather on the Earth. Uh, we get to see from above thunderstorms and tropical storms and hurricanes and things like that. Um, really spectacular looking, but we know the devastation a lot of those cause on Earth. Thank you. Hello, I'm Caroline Williams and this is Davis Dendy. We have two questions. How do you take a shower in space and how do you wring out a washcloth? All right, showering is uh, very tough because we don't have showers. A lot of people don't know that. So um, we're pretty much going five, six months without a real shower. But what we do is we get a towel or a washcloth and you either wet it down um, by the, the water bag like I mentioned before. And then you put, we have uh, kind of liquid soap that comes in a pouch like this. So you also put that on your towel and then you just wipe your body down. Um, so you do that and then you'll wash your hair typically every day. and. We usually do it after we work out. So we work out for about two to two and a half hours every day, and we're pretty sweaty by the end of that. So that's obviously a great time to take a shower. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Lal. How do you sleep in space? Is your equilibrium messed up? So I missed the first part of your question. Could you repeat that again? Um, how do you sleep in space? All right, how do you sleep in space? Um, so we have sleeping bags, and I brought mine out here to show everybody. Um, so here's our sleeping bag, and, and we have a little closet, I would call it, a uh, closet shape that's our bedroom. So we all have a kind of a private place we can go. And you just attach this sleeping bag onto one of the walls, and you can do it upside down, right side up, it doesn't matter because there's no up or down in space. Um, so whatever is more comfortable for you. Uh, and also in there you have a laptop where you can do your email and things like that. So it's kind of a nice private place to go to sleep and uh, call home potentially or do emails. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rex Wilson and this is Lainey McDowell. We have two questions for you. What foods do you miss in space? How does a salt shaker work? All right, so good question on the salt shaker. I happen to bring one for you. So um, everything up here like salt is actually in liquid form. So we have liquid salt, which comes in a little bottle like this. And then you just open the cap and you just squirt the uh, salt or whatever condiment that you like. We have um, pretty much everything up here and you squirt that on your food. Um, and once you do that, it'll stick to your food. So that's a good thing. Um, and then you uh, kind of mix it up with your spoon or fork and then eat it. And I didn't hear your first question. What foods do you miss in space? I'm sorry, it's not coming through clear up here for some reason. What foods do you miss in space, Shane? Uh, what foods do you miss? Okay, thank you. Um, well, I do miss crunchy things because we don't have a lot of crunchy things. So when we had that lettuce um, a few times up here, that was really nice. And I miss things like pizza, which you guys probably like as well. Uh, we don't have any of that up here. But in general, our food is very good, um, pretty good variety. Uh, we get to share with the Russians a lot too, so we'll have a lot of their cuisine and they'll have some of ours. We're lucky to have the French astronaut on board, so we get some European food as well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jack Merritt. How do you drink water without it floating away? 
All right, I'll try to show you here. Good question. So what I got here, this isn't water, but it's any drink bag we have is like this. This is an orange drink, so it's labeled. Um, it just has powder in it until we hydrate it and put water in it, but it then turns into kind of a giant Capri Sun pouch like you guys are probably used to. We do have a special straw um, because if you didn't have the straw on it, the liquid would just come out all over the place. So I'll try to show you what happens when you release the straw here. So you can just see uh, a ball of orange liquid here. And it'll just keep coming out and getting bigger the longer I do it. Uh, but in general, we just drink, when we're doing our drinks, you drink what you want, and then you close the straw back up so it doesn't come out like this. Thank you. <laughs> That My got a little messier Jack. than I thought. <laughs> what do you like to do in your free time? So we do get weekends off typically, so we do have some free time. I love calling my family and friends uh, back on Earth and chatting with them and catching up. So that's always nice. We also have plenty of movies, plenty of TV shows that they can send up to us or that are already on board the space station. So a lot of times we'll have movie night up here and we'll get the whole crew together and watch a nice movie together. I'm also a big sports fan, so I get a pretty good game sent up to me, whether it's college football or NFL or NBA or college basketball. So I enjoy watching those. It just kind of keeps me in touch with things on Earth. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gabby Tony. How do you cook your food in space? So we have a couple ways to do that. Um, we have some rehydratable foods that come in uh, packages like this. This is uh, probably your favorite, right? It's broccoli. Um, but what we do with these, these are rehydratable. So we hook these up to a machine that puts water in them. And you can put hot water in them. And if you do that, they're pretty much ready to eat in about five minutes. Um, but if you want to heat them up even more, or if you want to have a, a pouch of foods, a lot of our foods comes in pouches like this. We have a convection oven that looks like a little miniature suitcase that we put them in and you can heat them up for as long as you want. Usually it takes about 20 to 30 minutes uh, to heat things up before we eat them. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mary Elizabeth Kirkpatrick. I have two questions for you. Do you have a closet for your clothes and spacesuit? What happens to your dirty clothes? Very good question. These are a lot of logistics questions that you guys are asking. It's very important for you know brushing teeth and eating and, and clothes management because otherwise everything's a big mess. So we have little bags like this right here um, that we typically keep about two weeks worth of clothes in, maybe a little more. Um, so we'll put maybe two weeks of our clothes in here and then set it right next to our little bedroom. Uh, and that way it's easily accessible to get our stuff that we need for a couple weeks. And then after that's up, then we'll kind of reload a bag like that from another bigger suitcase um, where we keep the rest of our stuff. And I already forgot your second question. I'm sorry. What happens to your dirty clothes? Oh, yeah. So we wear our clothes for really about as long as you can stand them, and then you throw them away. So we don't have any way to clean them up here. Um, we get uh, not very many clothes, as you might think, because there's just not a lot of room, and, not a, and it's very expensive to fly things up here. So um, we get a couple pairs of pants, uh, probably for the whole mission, and then we get a shirt about once a week, and then we get workout clothes once a week. So. Uh, we have to manage our, our dirty clothes, but once they're dirty and we're done with them, then we just throw them away. Hello, my name is Hank Chopra, and my question is, how much force is exerted to the engines in order con to control the direction of the space station? Well, believe it or not, even as massive as this space station is, it doesn't take much force at all. And uh, we have little little engines called thrusters that we use to sometimes reorient the space station and put it in a different attitude. Um, in general, it just stays in the orbit that we're in, doesn't need any jets or anything firing, any engines firing continuously. Um, but every now and then for different events, we'll orient the station in a different direction and we'll need to use those thrusters in that case, but very little force. Thank you. 
My name is Carson Dodd. How do you talk to each other inside the space station versus while on spacewalk? So when we're inside, we just kind of, wherever each other are, we just visually go find them and talk to them just like I'd be talking to you in your classroom. Um, when we go outside, that's a bit different. The two spacewalkers, when you go outside, are talking uh, what's called on the big loop. So when every time they talk, it's going between the spacewalkers. It's also coming on board the space station and also going to the mission control centers around the world, mainly to Houston, um, which is where the spacewalks are being driven out of. Uh, in the case of our spacewalk. So you may have heard we had a spacewalk last Friday. It went very well. And uh, Thomas Pesquet and myself are going back outside this Friday for our second spacewalk. So uh, hopefully you guys can tune in and watch a little of it on Friday. Thank you. My name is Jack Schaefer. How long can you be outside of the space station? Can you just go outside to play? Oh, that would be nice. I think we would go out a lot more often, but no, it's a very, uh, it's very dangerous out there, and so it's very planned and calculated. Typically, when we go outside, uh, and these days we're going out a couple times a year, maybe would be the average. I think, uh, and we're just lucky enough that we're here during a time where we have some planned spacewalks, and that's why we're going out. And in general, we go out about six and a half to seven hours for each spacewalk. So it's pretty much like your entire school day, um, if you're thinking of it like that. But we don't have lunch or break or recess or anything like that. So um, we're very exhausted when we get back inside uh, and ready to eat for sure. And we sleep very well that night. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brooks Bradbury. And how do you clip your nails on the space station? All right, um, very carefully is probably the best answer, uh, but you clip them just like you do on Earth. The problem is that as soon as you clip it, it goes flying off, so you have to manage that. Uh, typically, with when you're doing things with small things like fingernails, you'll get a piece of tape and uh, kind of invert it and stick it near you so that you can grab little things like that and stick it to the tape while you're continuing, can you, continuing to do what you're doing. And then when you're done, of course, you wad that up and throw it away. Thank you. My name is Landon Kalish, and are stomach aches more severe in space due to the lack of gravity? That's a good question, and uh, nobody in my crew so far has had one, so I can't truthfully answer that. I don't think so. Um, your stomach is kind of in a different position, obviously, than it is on Earth. It's just kind of floating in the middle of your body. It's not sitting down lower like uh, when gravity's pulling on it. But I don't, I'm not sure it would be more severe or not. I don't think so. I think it would feel very similar to being on Earth. Thank you. Hello, my name is Raquel Watkins, and I was just wondering, what do you miss the most about Earth? Well, that's an easy one. I miss my family the most, for sure. Um, and just being there and missing some of my kids' events and being part of the, the li their lives. So that's a big deal uh, to be away for five months. And you can imagine if your parents are gone for that long, what they would miss. So to me, that's what I miss the most. Thank you. Hi, my name is Finney Roach. What plants are growing in the space station? Sorry, the first part of that was cut off. Um, my name is Finney Roach. What plants are growing in the space station? So currently we have um, some plants in the European module being grown by the French astronaut, and he's growing some mustard right now, some lentils. Um, and it's all actually students that sent those up for him, some European students. So he's doing that project for them. And like I mentioned earlier, I grew some lettuce uh, over the first few months of my mission. Uh, and that's all we have growing right now. Thank you. Shane, we're out of time. We are so grateful to you and proud of you, my friend. Thank you for giving our community this time. Good luck and Godspeed on the rest of your voyage. Thank you. Great to see you. Love it. Thanks for the great question. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.
Thank you to all participants and guests from the Lovett School Station. Please stand by while we reconfigure communications.